What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and welcome back to another episode of Building on a Budget where we build decks, full main deck and extra deck for under $100. And that also includes the shipping costs and everything in between because let's be honest, when we're factoring in costs, we are buying the cards online, we're gonna have to pay for shipping. So for that reason, I like to keep this series $100 or less with shipping included. Now, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff, more building on a budget as well. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. In today's video, we're featuring Sword Soul and how we can build Sword Soul for under $73. It's absolutely insane. I hope you guys enjoy it with that. Let's get right into the deck profile. So you guys can see here, I'm on TCG player and our total for this entire deck, 55 cards, 40 in the main deck, 15 in the extra deck, all for under $73. $72.91 is our total and you guys are gonna see this comes out after optimizing our cart. We have all the cards in here that we're gonna need and then it's gonna come out again to less than $73 for an entire deck and the entire extra deck. Honestly, with a lot of the common and rare reprints of a lot of staples in today's game, you can probably even build a side deck for under $100. But here we go, $73. Let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so as you guys saw, this entire deck is gonna cost you under $73, just about that price. And it's really cool because you guys can see that we have a lot of actual meta staples that you can actually include into this deck and still now fit with the budget, especially with a lot of the reprints that have been coming out recently. Konami has made it really easy to pay some of the best and most relevant cards at a budget. So let's start things off here with three Incredible Ecclesia. I think you need to be playing three in this deck, especially in a budget build. I've been playing two for a very long time. I think three makes a lot of sense because going second is pretty Pretty difficult in today's metagame and this card is insanely powerful going second it's not so bad for you going first either but i definitely think this is a really cool starter slash extender card when you are going second so that's why we're playing the three incredible ecclesia then we're playing all the sword soul names that you need to be playing in the deck you're playing three moye three long yuan two taie and then we're playing three emergence as well as two blackout now i'm going to explain this just a little bit over here because i think these ratios are the ratios you're going to need to play but the really cool thing about the sword soul engine is that it's such a tight engine that the rest of the card you play are really just whatever is needed for today's format so in today's format of course we're in december we're talking about the tier limits format so you guys are going to see a lot of these cards are built to beat the tier limits matchup and is also built to beat something like the fluanderies matchup which is probably the second best deck in the game right now right so here's the sorcerer engine you need to be playing all of these cards which is very very important this is your searcher for the deck i like to play two blackout i'll explain this the reason i like to play two blackout is because we are playing pot of desires which okay so here's the next card it's two pot of desires and the reason you want to play desires is because it's really just the best draw power you can play in this deck i think it's better than prosperity it's better than cards like extravagance because moye helps you draw cards as well when you're using moye as a synchro material you don't want to lose that draw just because you've activated extrav or prosperity right so that's one of the reasons but another reason again you're playing desires is because this deck just plays three ofs of all its most important cards and again blackout is at two because i don't want to lose the single blackout or the only blackout in the deck due to desires so i like playing two if i banish one i still have the second one this card also obviously has a really powerful engrave effect which is really nice so that's why I really like playing the two blackout and again the two pot of desires then for the tenyi engine okay so I'm gonna be honest with you the tenyi engine is kind of like meek I guess you would say in a tier limits format just because a lot of people are playing the bestial monsters and these cards can easily get hit with bestials but you can use them a lot of the time just for long one pitches just for reveals off moye so you do need to play these because they are the best worm monsters at the end of the day we're playing three vishuda three Ashuna and three Adhara. We're just maxing out on them because you really need to see a worm with your sword soul cards in your hand. So that's why I like to play these. And now if your opponent doesn't have a Bistial monster in hand, these cards are very powerful. Of course, we know what they do. The shooter lets you bounce a card, which is really nice. Ashuna lets you special summon from your deck. And then Adhara lets you recur some of the pieces that you've already used. So I like to max out on these. I know that the light and the dark can be problematic into a Bistial tier limit format, but I still think you need to be playing them. If anything, just for the worm and just for the name, just so that there's never going to be a situation where you open Moye or Long One and you don't have anything to pitch or you don't have anything to reveal, right? So you need to be playing these. And we're not playing Heavenly Circle or Chitana. I'm going to explain that here as well. The reason we're not playing those is because those cards specifically are really good when you're trying to 
dodge cards like Imperm or Valor or Droplet. But the thing is, in today's format, those cards are not that relevant. People are not playing three Imperm, three Droplet, or or three Valor stuff like that in their main decks. So there's no point of playing a card that's essentially only there to dodge those kind of cards when those cards aren't really relevant. Now in future formats, you can definitely play those. I don't think you need to play them in this format. Then for the hand traps, and this is a really cool thing, is Konami reprinted a bunch of these hand traps, and these hand traps are all really good into the tier limit matchup, but also really good into the Flawandries matchup. We're playing three DD Crow and three Bell. These, of course, are specifically for the tier limit matchup. That is the best deck of the format at the end of the day, and these cards just help you win in that matchup. Now, the reason we're not playing the Bestial monsters is because the Bestial monsters, yes, are very powerful, but again, in a budget build, Magnemu, Adrenus Worm are kind of expensive. You can play Sarnier. Sarnier is, I think, a two to three dollar card each, but the reason we're not playing Sarnier is because it actually conflicts pretty heavily with your Tenyis. If you're going second, let's say, and using your Bestial monster to stop your opponent from like making a play, let's say, right? Then you have that. But if you have a hand of like two Tenyis that you now need to combo off, well, you can't actually summon them because you have the Sarnier on your side of the field. So that's why I'm not playing the Bestial monster, specifically Sarnier. We're not playing in this budget build, but the DD Crows and the Ghost Bells are really good, obviously, into Tier Limits. Ash is another card that's okay into Tier Limit. It's not the greatest. However, it's really important to be playing these because it is really good into the Fluandries matchup, which is probably the hardest matchup that you're going to be going up against because you effectively have no outs to bear your statue and some of the floodgates that they can put up. So what Ash helps you do is if your opponent starts off by normal summoning a Rubina and you Ash the Rubina, it becomes a little bit more difficult for them to play. So that's why we're playing the three Ash. Then we are playing back row hate. We're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster as well as three Cosmic Cyclone. The really cool thing about these cards is they still fit within our budget, which is really nice. But also Cosmic is just really good into a lot of different matchups. Against a tier limit matchup, you can hit the Suli, you can hit the Perilorino. You can even hit some cards like Scream and whatnot. If you're going first and you set the Cyclone, then they can't get the Scream effect and whatever. So that's why Cyclone is really good into the tier limit matchup, but of course into the Fluandries matchup, you can hit cards like Map, you can hit cards like uh, Dreaming Town, I believe is the trap card, and then they have a hard time playing if they don't have those cards available as well. So that's why I think Cyclone is really good because generically it's really good into a lot of decks. And then on top of that, you have those Floodgate decks that are playing like Dimensional, Fissure, Macro, Cosmo, etc. So this card essentially just helps you beat those kind of decks. So the really cool thing about this main deck is it's pretty much equipped to beat everything you're going to see, right? It's equipped to be the Fluandries, the Tier Limits, the Rogue, all that stuff. You're ready to beat it just within this main deck. So moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing two of the Chichao. We're playing one of the Long Yuan or the Sinister Long Yuan, I should say, as well as the one of the Chengying. I think it's important to be playing these four. I don't think these ratios should change. One and one is perfectly five for the level tens. And then we're playing two of the Chichao because it is your searcher. It is a card that helps you negate on the field, which is really nice. Against the Fluandries matchup, you really want to end on the Chichao because the effect negation is very, very powerful into that matchup so you really need to be playing these then we're playing the two boxia as well as the one yazi boxia is really good because going second it helps you break boards but going first it helps you make another card which is very powerful and that is your chow fang now chow fang is really really powerful because your opponent cannot actually activate card effects of monsters with the original attribute or the same original attribute of the yangzing monster used for this and boxia is a light and boxia is most of the time what you're going to be using so essentially you're locking your opponent out of light monster effects so that's really cool as well it's also 2800 beater which is really nice for you then we're playing the the one Crimson Blader. This card is just one of my favorite cards that you can play in Sword Soul. It's really good, funny enough, into a lot of random matchups. Against the Flawandries matchup, if you're making this and you attack over one of their small birds, they actually can't summon level five or higher monsters. And the really cool thing about that is that they don't have access to Empin or Ryza or Avion anymore at that point. Crimson Blader is also really good into like the Despia matchup. If you somehow get this off into the tier limit matchup as well, it's really powerful. So that's why I really like the Crimson Blader. We're playing the one Dragite. Now, Dragite, the reason we're playing it, it's not the greatest card in Sword Soul. There are are typically better options something like Baron de Fleur but we all know how expensive Baron de Fleur is and so Dragite is cool if you have the Moye already engraved if Moye is not engraved you don't really want to be making this but it is an option for you another really cool option for a level 10 is your Ruddy Rose Dragon Ruddy Rose Dragon funny enough is kind of cool in this deck because when it's synchro summoned you banish all cards from the graveyards both graveyards which is really nice and that can be really relevant into something like the tailmate matchup but on top of that if your opponent were to activate any cards that destroy cards on the field you can negate the activation and then you can summon a Black Rose Dragon for free. And keep in mind that you can't use the Black Rose Dragon effect to blow up the field essentially when it's summoned because it has to be synchro summoned, but it gets you an extra body on the board, which is never a bad thing, right? And lastly, we're just playing three Monk of the Tenyi. I'm not playing Shaman. Shaman is also not that great. And to be honest with you, in a lot of situations, it's not amazing. I think three Monk is just a little bit better. You can technically play two Monk and one Shaman, but uh, I like three Monk because it does come up honestly a lot of the time. So that's it for the deck. $73 for this entire deck, including the extra deck, including 
including the main deck. Honestly, Magnificent Mavens made this deck insanely affordable with all these cards being reprinted essentially. And then you have the Diddy Crows, which were reprinted in Mavens. And then you have the Ghost Spells as well as the Ash, which I believe were both reprinted in the Crystal Beast structure deck. And they're both really affordable now. So $73, honestly, it's never been like this before where you can play three Ash and you can play three Bell and you can play three Crow all in the deck and then still be under $100. Honestly, we're at $73, which is insane. And I definitely think if you guys are trying to play Sword Soul, this is a really good way to play it on a budget. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is building on a budget Sword Soul edition. I think this deck is super, super fun to play. And the fact that you can play a lot of the meta staples for under $100 is absolutely insane. And again, I think I said this in the video, but you can probably even build an entire side deck and still keep it under $100 just because a lot of the really good side deck cards have all been reprinted as commons or rares in the most recent like structure decks as well as side sets which is really really nice so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one if you guys have any suggestions on what you guys want to see next for building on a budget let me know as well in the comment section down below because then i can make that happen thank you guys all for watching we're at 8,000 subscribers it means the most to me the next goal is 10,000. i appreciate every single one of you thank you all for watching and with that spanko sign and out Peace.